Wait, where's my... Where is my... Where is my stream window? Okay. Oh, there's my stream window. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. So, good evening everyone and wel welcome... Uh, welcome everyone to another episode of the Hammerhead Plays. So, while I wait for this... Uh, while I wait for this slight scuff, uh, while I wait for this timer to finish, yeah, while I'm having, while I'm waiting for this timer to finish, I'm gonna have to uh, do my usual announcements on social media. I'm actually not sure if my my uh, my my stream overlays are gonna work properly. But you know what, I'm just gonna YOLO it. So, yeah. As usual, I'll be back in... What is this? Three minutes? Damn, one minute usually goes by too fast. Okay. So, posting to Twitter. No one's gonna make me call it X. Posting to Facebook. And then posting on my gang. Then posting to my the Discord servers that I'm currently in, which none of them are mine. I am so proud of these last two thumbnails that I've made recently. This thumbnail of Asphalt 9 is just me from a replay. And then this thumbnail that I made for BTD6 is just... Uh, okay, this is what I hate about the thumbnail. This is what I hate about the thumbnail. It seems like the thumbnail has a left side bias. I know it's usually a right side bias, but for this one it's a left side bias because the some of the buttons are usually in the bottom right side of the... Yeah, some of the buttons are usually in the right side. My new overlay is, yeah, my new overlay is, was working pretty well on my previous stream, which is on my Asphalt stream, but for some strange reason, it's working funky on, on, uh, on this new one, because I, so I had to, I had to adjust some, my, my current, uh, OBS overlay, I have to adjust my current overlay very recently. And something came up today that I could not really set up the entire afternoon. So I literally only had like this evening to set this up. You know what? Uh, you know what? I'm basically ready so I might as well just uh, start the stream. I mean, I technically started the stream but I mean like I'll get right in, right in with it. Having a good day? Let's just say that my... Let us just say that my day day got ruined with a random chore that uh that ate up the entire afternoon. Oh, okay, there you, there you go. So, uh good evening everyone and welcome to another episode of the Hammer Guy Plays. Tonight we're going to be we're going to be playing some bloons. So, this uh this is currently the latest update for BTD6 which came out uh which came out literally last uh literally this Monday. So there was actually a lot of things that happened this Monday. So this Monday, uh, they released the update notes for Asphalt 9, which uh, completely, uh, which completely caught me off guard. And at the same time, 
Uh, that same mor- no wait. The update notes for Asphalt 9 for the new season came out on Monday, which was Monday 12 midnight. Oh, okay. So from 12 a.m. Uh, the DM, sorry, the DM was it the DM? No, no, no. The update notes for uh, for Asphalt 9 unfortunately came out. Is it about Benjamin? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me let me let me slow down a little bit. Um, so there were update notes involving Asphalt 9 that came out on Monday evening. Which was almost liter, which was 30 minutes right after I ended my stream. Now the update notes for that game was actually leaked almost a month early, or two months early. I'm not sure. I think a month early. So that definitely caught me off guard, and and that definitely interrupted my car hunt on that game. And then this update, uh, I already knew this update was actually coming. What I, what I was not expecting was that this update actually came in. Uh, on that same, on that same morning. So basically, I could not, uh, I could not, um, I could not react fast enough. So, big guys. And then after that, on Wednesday, uh, the new season for Asphalt Nine came up. You know, for some reason, uh, BTD Battles Two does seasons, but for some reason, uh, they don't. Wait, BTD Battles Two does seasons. And it's mostly content seasons. Because it's relatively competitive, but then again, BTD6 doesn't. But then again, to be honest, BTD6 is not really a multiplayer centric. I mean, yeah, BTD6 has co-op, but it's not like multiplayer centric compared to uh, compared to uh, compared to Battles 2, where 100% of the time you're gonna be having to go on multiplayer. So, so unfortunately, I have not finished setting up my. My stream, like I for, I have not finished setting up my chat on my phone. I usually monitor. I, despite being a streamer, I understand that there are many streamers out there with multi, uh, with multiple. Uh, I understand that there are multiple streamers that have, uh, that have multiple. Uh, there are many streamers out there that have like multiple. There are many streamers out there that have like multiple uh, screens multiple monitors and all of that I currently don't have space for that even if I did so Valorant, Valorant stream on Twitch and you're gonna be home early oh that's nice and oh yeah it's TGIF noise so anyway uh, give me 360p Okay. So for context, I mentioned before that I, oh my, my chat is actually working, but I think it's expiring too soon. Okay. For context, a while ago I mentioned before that I was setting up my new overlay. Here's some context. So I'm gonna turn off my uh, video for now. Five thirty p.m. Okay. I'm gonna turn off some of my video. Wait, where's the audio? No, 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 I mean, I'm gonna turn off the game feed. And this is my new layout. So, so I'm sorry, I apologize for breaking the immersion, but this is supposedly the new layout that I'm working on. Because for a little bit of context, this was my old layout. Yeah, so this one, this one is my old layout. At this point, I was basically measuring in, I was basically measuring in, what is this, in golden ratios all the time, that I completely forgot that I have to put some stuff around the stream or around the screen. So this was, this was the old layout. And basically, if I have to put like stuff around the street, around the, around the stream windows, there's not much space. So that's why I'm always struggling to actually... I put stuff around my stream. So now, uh, I have I now have to worry about this one, and this is my new lay layout, which I debuted. Well, it's not really much of a debut because it's it's honestly not it's not like a big deal. But um, this is my new layout, 
and it doesn't even perfectly fit for some reason. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, where's the game? Where's the game? Where's the game feed? Okay. So because I have to rearrange the stuff, because I have to rearrange the stuff on my uh, on my stream, I had to delete some uh, a few things. And basically, I have not finished setting up my. Uh, I I basic. This is actually designed for my. This is actually designed for my Asphalt Nine streams. But unfortunately, due to time constraints, I had to uh, pony up together some some random stuff. So I just copy pasted everything, and I was not expecting everything to actually work. So yeah. Anyway, let's get right into it. I received a DM on Discord. So this is, since this is not related to blue, I'm just gonna watch this quickly. Those are some uh so Fabia, those are some weird jumps. Hey, uh quick quick experiment. Uh so Fabia. Uh here's something weird. If you can get your hands on a This is gonna be a weird experiment for you. Uh but if you can get your hands on an editing software like big if and the, the closest editing software, the free editing software that I can recommend to you would be DaVinci Resolve. If you have uh, access to a Windows laptop, I'm not expecting everybody to have, to have access to a Windows laptop, but uh, it, it is an option. Try cutting down your window. Uh, try cutting down your stream into vertical. I understand that it's... I considered streaming Asphalt last Sunday in vertical format, but I have a feeling that that's going to be... That's going to cause a little bit of problem. But, I don't know. Maybe just try it out. That edit was from Android. Oh, okay. So, in the event that you can... I don't have Windows. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of knew that... I kind of knew that... Uh, I kind of knew that not everybody had Windows. Uh, maybe by college, when you reach college, there's a, possi there's a very large possibility that you're, you're going to end up needing uh, a Windows laptop I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say it's mandatory but then again considering that a lot maybe a large part of your uh, high school life a uh, senior high school life uh, some projects can definitely be done on a phone there's a possibility that you're not gonna need uh, you're gonna not gonna need to... uh, okay because I experimented with uh, clips uh, I experimented with YouTube shorts and basically, for some strange reason, vertical video, uh, YouTube shorts definitely garner a lot, a crap ton of views way too easily. Like, when I started clipping my streams, uh, back approximately last year. Was it last year? No, no, no. Two years ago. When I started clipping my streams, it was so difficult to actually gain traction on some of my view videos. Like, my videos were like 10 views, 20 views. If I'm lucky, sometimes you even get to 100 views. And then when I posted a YouTube short. Oh, ah, okay. When I attempted when I attempted to post a video on my YouTube short, on my YouTube shorts feed in the vertical format. So BTD Battles 2 is like one of the only uh, one of the only games where you can basically fit uh, where you can basically fit the game. In the vertical format very easily although only one side of the opponent uh, you guys can actually go to my channel and then and check out my shorts my most watched short is apparently a misnamed uh, is actually a wrongly named uh, video that for some reason garnered 8,000 views so th that's that's insane I was like getting 100 view 100 view videos or maybe 50 view videos and then, if I'm lucky, maybe 200 view videos, and it's suddenly 8,000 views. My God. So yeah, 
I considered I considered streaming in the vertical format. Enjoy enjoy the stream. All right. Uh, I considered streaming my my most recent Asphalt Nine stream in vertical format. I'm not saying that I'm gonna be streaming uh, horizontal. I'm not gonna say I'm abandoning uh, horizontal streams. What I'm saying is that I'm gonna be streaming. It's possible on YouTube to stream horizontal and vertical at the same time. Uh, what is the short called? Uh, it's called spike zone versus complex blimps. So none of the so none of the names even none of the names even match up. And I think I'm gonna be I'm gonna be clipping some of my enjoy the stream. You're gonna have to work. You're gonna have to work for a long shift. All right. Well, uh, I guess good night to you. Uh, take care, I guess. So that part. Okay, but yeah, uh, you can you can jump to my vid to my uh, channel. There's a there's a there's a video called what is this? It's called Spike Zone versus Complex Blimps, and because I think the reason why it actually garnered like a crap ton of views is actually because I called something wrong. The opponent was using deadly spikes, and I call it perma spike. And literally all of the comments was literally calling me out on me calling it wrong. And I think that's the reason why it garnered a crap ton of views. But other times it's like because... But other times it's like the really WTF uh, wins. Where I baited the opponent into shooting their dartling team into a... Into a bait. That's that's a pretty common... That's a pretty common tactic that I always uh, do in my, in my battles too. So my most watched videos as of right now are are the ones from BTT Battles 2. And it seems like I'm gonna have to upload it more of the, those again very soon. Okay. So I guess uh, enough talk. I'm gonna have to uh So one of my upcoming videos that I'm gonna be uploading is me trying is me accidentally imitating uh KSI's uh Oh you liked it, alright, nice. Uh one of my upcoming YouTube shorts is me, me accidentally recreating KSI's uh, yes 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 meme. Uh, if you remember, there was a viewer battle where somebody attempted to send me uh, a crap ton of, like two ZOMGs, and I was able to kill the ZOMG. And I was reacting yes 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 yes, but apparently the children were able to escape, and I was like no no no. Wild. Not really sure. Not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure what should I be naming that. Uh, that that short. Uh, accidentally recreated KS. Early celebration, I think. Wait, hold on. Let me. I think. Yeah, I think that's a good name for it. Early celebration. There you go. Okay, so let's get right into it. As usual, forty-two minute timer. Hopefully, my uh, my timer does not wait. Okay, so first stop. Round 1 to 60, uh, no thanks, not now. Actually, wait, let me try that advanced challenge. Now, I already completed this advanced challenge. Alright. I already completed this advanced challenge, and I didn't even look, Ethan Ra look at Ethan Reid's video. I looked at the thumbnail. I looked at the thumbnail. But strangely enough, I didn't really open the video. But I... But I did see the Glaive Lord in the thumbnail, so I guess that gives a hint. What is the name of this challenge? This is such a weird name. It's called I Hate Sun Temple by Eskimo. What? And despite having... 
despite having Sun Temple in the name, this challenge can be completed with without the Sun Temple whatsoever. I can technically... You know what? Oh yeah, I got that. Eskimo. This is so weird. Round 63 with all camo. You know, that actually... That actually gives me... Yeah. Yeah, that's his name. By Eskimo. With a Q for some reason. You know, that actually gives me... That gives me a question. Which one is the better... So, I learned this in, I learned this in, uh, while well, playing Elite Blunarius. That the tier 5, the best tier 5 towers for popping group balloons, apparently are also really great for popping, uh, for popping, uh, Moab Rushes. So if I go with this one, with Glaive Ruler, 26,000 sell price. Okay. So this is the... Oh. This is the Blunarius Tier 2 Rush. Yeah. This is the Blunar... This is basically the... The Blunarius Tier 2 Rush. And it's accurate because it's round 60. But that's 26,000 sell price. Oh wait, you know what? Let me To make it fair, I'm, I'm gonna use this one. However... Blue is also one of my favorite towers. So this is also an... This is also an option. Now, obviously the gloom, the gloop puddles. Wait, how much is the? Sorry, my. Ah! Sorry, uh, my my nose suddenly itched. So yeah, big big yikes. The Bloon Solver, before the, before the Glue Puddles update, yeah, before the, before the Relentless Glue Blue Solver swap, was basically one of the best, uh, was basically one of the best ways to, ac to actually melt, uh, melt down DDT rushes. But strangely enough, this is actually the better option now. I would say that this is the best option if you don't have to worry about DDTs. And you also have to... Or maybe you don't have to worry about DDTs and you don't have to worry about camo, camo detection. So now if you have to deal with camo detection... Uh, let me give it some... Okay. Okay then. Uh, I have been absolutely bamboozled. Because I was not expecting that. Now. I guess the I guess the major appeal of the Glaive Lord. A hundred DDTs. All right then. Oh, no, 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 uh...
by the time the first one gets by the time that the first the one in the front gets glued the all it's basically chain reaction to the to the to the rear because of the uh it basically chain reactions to the rear because uh the glue puddles so theoretically speaking i can do this if i send one bfp okay It gets annihilated here. However, I can do this. If you do this, the the balloon puddles is basically going to annihilate the DDT even faster. So, however, if you don't really care about incredibly packed uh if you don't really care about incredibly packed moabs you can go for sticky glue usually sticky glue is actually the more uh, the more correct option based on what i've experienced but then again if you're if it's like your only option or your only or it's like your frontal defense usually a uh, sticky glue or stronger glue is usually the, the better option but if you're using it like a uh, cleanup at the rear then uh yeah it's great for group damage yes yes okay so against ddt's they're basically the same but what about for moabs or bfps So the first that they got was here. But if I go with blue splatter instead. So it's able to affect more Moabs here. Oh, they're able to die in much sooner. And because there are more glue puddles. Yeah, because there are more glue puddles that actually show up. What's going to happen is that. It's gonna basically kill more. So, yeah. Now, obviously, it's not gonna be able to handle a BAD. For obvious reasons. But you know what? To humor you, I'm just gonna do it anyway. So, obviously, it's not gonna be able to kill a BAD. For pretty obvious reasons, it's it's definitely not going to kill a BAD. Okay, so this is not going to go... Like, I can I can see the health indicators. It's like, it's only one... I guess this is like one-fourth gone. So, this is not working out. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's almost doing nothing. However... However... If instead I were to do this, Okay, so I didn't really get far enough. However, I did see the damage actually get, uh, get, uh, get much earlier here. So yeah. So yeah. Balloon solver definitely a Moab, uh, anti-group Moab uh, thing, but not really DPS. Well, it's definitely DPS for like early rounds. Now. 
However, if we're going to go with Glaive Lord, obviously the Glaive Lord is not going to be able to kill the BAD. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was close. Interesting enough, the major selling point of the book of the Glaive Lord is the fact that it has uh, when you reach this when you reach this tier, you'll notice that it has some weird these kind of scratching. I kind of forgot what's the name of this uh, debuff. Yeah, I kind of forgot what is the name of this debuff. But I'm pretty sure it has something to do with... It's definitely some kind of a damage over time. Yes, that was accidentally 100 BADs. Yes. So it did get close to... So it did get close to actually popping it, but not... Not that far, like, to be fair. Oh well, so anyway. Here's something really interesting for this update. So other than the obvious Geraldo skin... Oh, I forgot about this. Where's the name... Castle Revenge. Okay, I'm gonna play this later. It's basically better than the Gloon Solver, that's for sure. Alright. So. Experiments. If you remember the Pinata, the Pinata Bloon last year during the if you if you remember the pinata balloon last year, yeah. If you remember the pinata balloon last year, where you're able to pop it over and over again to get some massive, uh, basically to get a massive score. Phase one is basically that, with the exception that it's a boss balloon now instead of uh, instead of the, a BAD. The party the party balloon is a BAD and not a boss. So there's that. So. I guess we're gonna have to do the title of this video where I tried to try to kill FaZe again. I have to say, I have a lot of I had a lot of fun trying to beat this quest. The only disappointment is that it's it doesn't play phases uh, uh it doesn't play phases theme. Anyway. So unfortunately, no monkey knowledge here. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, here's something interesting about this this uh this experiment. This uh special quest. The round is actually based on how many pop uh, how many times that phase has been popped? So as of right now, since he hasn't been popped yet, it's currently round one. So it's gonna be spawning balloons from what round one. If you pop him once, it's he's gonna be round two. If you pop him three times, it's gonna be round three. Oh wait, if you popped him once, it's gonna be round two. If you pop him twice, it's gonna be round three. So on and so forth. Obviously, this game ends when phase finally, uh, well, leaks. Duh. Okay, crossbow, very quick shots. It starts off with an absurdly low HP, but later on, by the time that you get to a crap ton of pops of phase, he's got his health is gonna skyrocket to the millions. So don't uh don't count on that being low enough that you can uh, spam it. So you know this is his HP is four hundred twenty three. It goes now to 449. Hello, untapered leech. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to, uh, welcome back. I guess I'm, I'm trying to kill.
phase over and over again like a zombie, even though this isn't lich. Okay. Cell, sharpshooter. Okay. Gotta get that crit. Gotta get that crit game working. Now, because FaZe is a camel bloon, so he works like regular FaZe. So I need to I need to focus on uh oh there's Benjamin okay. Let's see what we can do here. Yes, this actually works just like the pinata bad quest. Okay, so I'm already gaining some sharpshooters. Gotta get that crit game. Three zero two will be a great one, yes. Alright. I cannot believe the last time I played on Silver Springs on stream. I totally did not did not exploit this. You can place you can place a monkey over here and the juggernaut balls are gonna ricochet all over the place. Like why did I, why did I think of that last time? Alright. Is it the last sharpshooter? Okay. No no no, I, I need one more sharpshooter. Okay. How many pops is this? 14 pops. So I'm gonna take it a little bit slower for now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush things yet. Okay. Bad hacks or strategy. So you notice that phase is not performing the uh the skip. Uh bad news. You're gonna learn the hard way of how how he triggers the skip. Okay. With Droid of the Jungle, I can basically work don't have to worry about about uh Bloons getting leaked. And my plan here is that Monkey uh Monkey Town is going to buff his his uh his uh cash per pop Can I fit one more here? Okay. Dang it. Yes, exactly. Uh, I'll show I'll show you guys that later on. That's actually useful because there are some maps in which you can't really place farms. Now that he can generate up to 5000 bucks. Yeah, now that he can generate up to 5000 bucks at max level, you can basically use him in the map where there's a pro where uh where money generation is a pro where farming is a problem, and that's really gr what's really great. The only problem here is that early on, yeah. before level eight, he's actually pretty nerf. Am I missing something? At the moment, nothing. Round twenty six. Okay. Monkey Town, sell. Cell, Monkey City. Okay. Gotta get that Dartling Gunner because you guys know what I'm gonna be doing. Okay. Yes. Fan club. Oh, 
For maximum uptime, I usually get three, three, uh, three fan clubs. Okay, this is a bad idea. Yes. This is to make sure that this is to make sure that Benjamin actually level levels up much faster. Online. Handle this. Come on, MAD, MAD. All right. Let's go, MAD. Look at it. Look at his health go down really fast. But now I'm gonna have to worry. Okay. Oh no! Is he gonna do the skip? Oh no! He's gonna do the skip! So I leaked some lives and now now he has to do this. Now he did the skip. Okay. Ultra jog. Crossable master. Uh, EFC. All I have to do is wait. Get no, no, no. 100k? 100k? Let's go! Okay, I'm gonna have to slow it down. I'm gonna have to slow it down. Because I'm, er I'm earning a crap ton of money. And there's max level Benjamin. Wait, what should I get next? Ah! Get Boomerang. Handle this. Handle this. Right. Glaive Dom. Let's go. One star uh, degree one glaive dom. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty bad. Degree one glaive dom, but oh well. One hundred pops. Now for insane, for insane bonus points and to make sure that no, none of them uh, comes out. This is absolute hacks. Bloom Master Alchemist. I wish I'd actually done this sooner, but then again, oh well. Right now I'm just doing this for style points. Alright, alright. 
Let's go, Navar. Okay, you know what? This is gonna be very problematic. And I'm actually scared to do this. Because the last time I attempted to do this, this actually broke my game. To be fair, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, I'm just using this. I'm just doing this for style points and not exactly. Yeah, I'm just doing this for style points and not exactly going like the most efficient way. All right. Quick warning for those who want to do this quest. Be careful with summoning the sub paragon because the sub paragon is gonna basically kill your FPS. So remember the fact that the the sub has the preemptive strike uh, attack. You notice that. You notice that the. You notice that. Uh, that phase is like continuously summoning. Uh, it's like continuously summoning. Uh, summoning Moabs from its portal. Like you're pressing. Uh, like you're pressing next on a race. Imagine like a hundred or a thousand of those. Uh, first strike, uh, preemptive strike missiles are gonna launch at the same time. Yeah, so I'm afraid that this is gonna destroy my game. Oh my god! I knew it. I knew it. No, not only is that OP, it's basically gonna kill your game if you're not careful. Because imagine in sandbox mode, you're you're summoning like a thousand DDTs at once with no spacing. Yeah, that's what's gonna that's what's gonna kill your RAM and your CPU, and maybe that's gonna make your phone explode. My God, I'm experiencing a crap ton of lag. Lower graphics detail. Um, I don't know what's the lower. This this is a. This this game is a potato friendly game. No, uh This has nothing to do with the graphics detail. It's actually have to do with the CPU. Because it has to handle like again, a thousand missiles launching at the same time or something at most. Get ready. Handle this. Get ready. Get ready. Okay, this is already a bit too late. I'm just gonna do this anyway. I'm gonna do another run of this later, but not not now. So you can clearly see that the the sub paragon is continuously launching first strike. Ah, uh, sorry, preemptive strike missiles over and over again. And the only way to actually get the get the run the game to run run better is to actually forcibly submerging the paragon. You know what? Here we go. Go like doom ship. Yes, exactly. Oh boy, he's gonna do the skip. Is he gonna do the skip? Ah, oh, dang it. Oh well. Okay. Not bad. Okay. For context, yes, that is my best score so far, which is 155. Yeah, that is my best score so far, which is 155. And oh yeah, here's something really weird. This game was updated once after the initial update 42. 
originally the score to beat was 20 but it seems like because there are many people who are finding really creative ways to actually beat this uh this uh this quest they raised it to 40. yeah wait what time is it oh 10 minutes okay you know what let's do it again Let's do it again because it's fun. You might have a world record? No. I think HD Bomb or Ethan Raid has already done like 160. It's actually really difficult to get to 155. 160... I'm actually trying to get to 160, to be honest. Well, you definitely should. Quick note, later on in the stream, I'm gonna try to do the, uh, the Bulnarius quest. Because I recently learned how to beat this quest. Okay. Crossbow, quick shots. And another monkey. The key for the t to the first ten pops would be to rush all of your, uh, to rush the, uh, the. The key to the first ten pops is definitely to rush. All of your camo, uh, camo balloons or rather crossbow monkeys. Yaya yeah, yeah, Josh or Jaja ja, Josh. Gets a 432 with all the purpose spike. <laughs> okay, that's sick. Okay. Okay. Sell this. Sharpshooter. Gotta get that crit. Okay. Weird strap. So whenever I beat, whenever I beat, notice that he actually generates income. Whenever I beat, uh, yeah, whenever I, whenever I pop, uh, phase, it basically ends the round. And if you have any cash generation monkeys, it's going to generate cash. Um, you know what? I'm gonna try something different. Oh, Perk, you gotta go? Okay, no problem. Uh, thanks for joining in either way. Uh, I hope you had fun. And if you have not tried this, uh, this, this quest, it's definitely very fun. Uh, let's see if I can... Let's see if I can get away with... Yeah, let's see if I can just get away with two sharpshooters. Executing hack. Okay. Sticky Bomb. Dude. Oh! Sticky Bomb definitely does better. So Sticky Bomb definitely chews up its its regular health very easily. Oh crap. And of course, yes, the... I wouldn't exactly say that this is, this is new meta. Because... Uh, how do you put this? I think... I, I think... 
I formed this strategy around Ethan Raid, uh, watching Ethan Raid. What round is it? Oh, round 21, okay. Wait, round 21... Oh, wait, no. Uh, where is Druid? Druidic Reach, um... No, no, no. Jungle Druid. Okay. Seventeen thousand. Okay, Monkey Town Radar Scanner, Cell Cell. Ultra Jog. Grab the Shark Shooter on this this one. So far, so good. I'm actually doing slightly better progress than last time. Level up. Uh, guys? Get ready. What's up? Handled it. Get ready. Uh, Bob Van Lent, hello. Uh, thanks for, uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, whether you just came in or you are been lurking from a while ago, uh, I hope you're, you're enjoying me trying to pop FaZe here, who's been going really slow. Okay. Am I close to B? Oh, I think I... I think I'm getting MAD earlier. MAD. Real talk, I'm actually... When, when is Ninja Kiwi going to... When is Ninja Kiwi going to release the uh, the MAD skin for the BAD? Like, didn't they think of that? MAD, mad bad. Okay. Energizer. Get ready. Uh, uh, Bob Van Lint, or I'm just gonna call you Bob. Uh, uh, my current high score is currently 155. Not the best out there, but it's still pretty high up. I think the mad was supposed to rival the rad. Oh, damn. Okay. That's actually that's actually pretty Wait. Ray of Doom. Oh yeah, okay. Oh wait, speaking of which. Cell APM. Let's go, Apex Plasma Master. Handle this. 
Okay. Bastard bomber. Looks like I'm gonna have to get the. Looks like I'm gonna have to get the. Okay, max level Benjamin. All right. I'm gonna have to get the ninja monk, the ninja paragon much sooner than than expected. Oh yeah, uh, since you're a new viewer here, uh, I will have to explain that a little bit later. But first, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to beat I'm gonna have to uh, finish this quest first. Okay, let's go, Ascended Shadow. Wow, look at it chew through. Look at look at these two just chew right through phase. But while I'm uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna have to. Okay, of course, Glaive Lord. I have to say that from a while ago, I'm pretty sure that because of the phase, because I leaked the balloon a while ago, that's the reason why. That's the reason why I got a lower score a while ago. All right, Glaive Dom. Twenty-one. All right, twenty-one. Oh yeah, get wrecked is right. Oh wait, what is next? Trade Empire. Gotta go. I'm gonna go for that. Gotta go for that. Uh, Navar Paragon. Oh yeah, I forgot. Spirit of the Forest. Gotta go for that constant damage. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Handle this. Cast money. Handle this. Okay. Let's go, Navark. You know, I completely forgot that the, the, that the, that the Glaive Dom actually knocks back up balloons almost all the time, with the except, with the obvious exception of the BAD. All right, what should I be, what should I be summoning next? Ah, yes, Doom Ship. Okay, this is insane. Get Get it's actually a good thing that I got the, the Ascended Shadow pretty early. Because remember, one of the secondary effects of the Ascended Shadow, shadow is the... Uh, the passive sabo ability so grand sabotage remember actually nerfs every every uh every mob that enters the screen by 25 percent less health but as ascended shadow it can basically do that uh, it can basically do that with bad's as well 
All right, doom ship, let's go. Oh wait, I'm, for I'm forgetting something. Oh, banana, hello. Thank you for joining in. Uh, join me as I basically flatten FaZe and its minions with approximately one, two, three, four, five paragons and some really expensive tier 5 towers. Wow, it's actually getting really difficult to pop phase because phase is already currently at almost 2 million HP. And it's also getting legitimately more difficult to pop phase because he's got stronger minions to actually he summon. So yeah, this is beyond insane. If you thought the BAD pinata, yeah, if you thought the BAD pinata last year was was insane, this is just beyond that. I think the term for that, I think the, I think the term for that is uh, psychotic, maybe. Oh no! Oh no! Dang it! Okay. Well, that was a good run. I'm still salty that I didn't beat my, my high score. Oh well. So yeah, this, this is my high score, which is 155. I can assure you that this is not the highest score that I've seen so far because... Um, I've seen other YouTubers reach 160. For sure. So there's that. Okay. So for those who are currently new here, uh, wait, hold on. So, uh, for those who are currently new here to my channel, um, so all I can say is hello, I'm the Hammer Guy. Uh, my channel is called the Hammer Guy Plays, but you guys can call me the Hammer Guy or just simply Hammer. Uh, if you guys just want to know what is the what. Why is my name the Hammer Guy? Uh, let us just say that in my language, it is a pun. So basically, it's a distinct. Uh, basically, it is a bilingual pun. But you also have to name. But you also have to know my uh, my real name, which I'm obviously not going to reveal very obvious, uh, very easily in public. So there's that. So there's some there's some name naming lore right there. Anyway, um. For those who are new here, you guys may have noticed that there is a, uh, there is this, this weird timer. So a while ago, this was t counting down from 40 something minutes and down to, it says stretch or stretch break. So for those who are not familiar and for those who are new to my channel, uh, I used to stream on Twitch, but I'm trying to slowly transition into YouTube now. Yeah, at the moment, I'm I'm slowly trying to transition into YouTube, and during my Twitch days, what I usually do to uh, encourage my viewers to uh, to give me a follow is by rewarding the viewers by well, I reward the viewers by making by telling them that uh, if they give me a follow, uh, I'll do jumping jacks by the next uh, stretch break. So that's what I'm gonna do. So. Unfortunately, because stream elements is not 100% working right now, and because it's not like counting the subscribers that I, uh, it's not counting the subscribers that I am, uh, yeah, it's not counting the subscribers on my channel. Unfortunately, I have to count it myself. Doi. 
So it doesn't call out the new sub it doesn't call out the new subscribers, but I'm pretty sure that uh, here on YouTube that's gonna be a little difficult to uh, manage. And also, but even if nobody does, even if nobody does give me a subscribe, I'm actually still going to do jumping jacks either way. And the reason behind that is because, well, uh, let's just say that I'm a fitness. What is this? I'm a fitness otaku or fitness enthusiast. So, yeah. Axolotl boy music. Thank you for thank you for joining in. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you were lurking from a while ago or you just came in. But either way, yeah. I'm not sure if you you guys have just came in or you were lurking from a while ago, and that's completely fine. Uh, but uh, welcome either way. So so a I am somebody who I'm somebody who works out quite a lot because I am. Okay. From afar, I might look not fat. Wait, let me let me turn off the uh, let me turn off the auto frame. Dang it! I'm wearing dark I'm wearing dark gray here. It's not it's not working. Oh well. From afar, uh, you know what? I think the reason behind that is because of the. You know, let me turn off the filter. There you go. All right, that's that's. I think that's better, but it's not. It's not any. It's not any better. Okay. So, from afar, I don't look. I don't look fat. But I think the term for I think I think the term for my shape is actually deceptively overweight. So yeah. Yeah. I call my shape as deceptively overweight because. I mean, from afar, and even if you are, even from viewing from this this angle, I don't look fat. But I assure you, I'm actually on the overweight side. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm on the slight overweight side. I don't have any abs, and because I don't want to, and because uh, healthcare in my country is also not very reliable. Uh, you can also say that for America, I guess, but. Uh, healthcare in my country is not very reliable where people can just say uh, if they get sick well, they're gonna be like well I guess I'll die and I'm not really expecting the con I'm not expecting this country to actually uh, give me give me some reliable health care so I might as well just do it myself by you know by literally keeping in shape wait hold on Okay, so A, I want to stay fit, B, uh, I am a little bit ADHD, so I do, I'm trying my best, I try my best to not, um, I try my best not to drown myself in overstimulation of whatever I'm doing, of course I do enjoy what I'm doing, I just don't want to be overstimulated by anything, especially on the stream where I'm, I'm usually going to be streaming for at least 2 hours or 3 hours sometimes. So, and also considering I'm gonna be streaming for like two hours, I don't want to get, I don't want to become sedentary. So there's there's that term where, uh, after sitting for two hours or sitting for one hour, your your knees become jelly, even if you have not done much. Something like that. So yeah. So anyway, checking my uh checking my subs right now from 252, it's now 254. That means I'm gonna have to do, uh, let's see. What's 2 by 10? 20. And then plus 10 that I usually do. 10, 30. Okay. So I'm going to do 30 jumping jacks. I do not have a home gym. I do not have a home gym, but I do have like a gym. I do have like a fitness corner. latest purchase. I recently bought something from my... Where is that? Oh, okay. Here's something interesting. So this is a grip... No, don't blur, don't blur. Okay, there you go. This is a grip trainer. This is a very weird grip trainer.
Oh, Celine, hello. Thank, uh, thank you for joining in. I'm not sure if you're the Celine. Yeah. But yeah, that's you know sedentary. When you when you when you're uh, when you're sitting sitting on ass for way too long, that's that's usually the thing. That's usually the thing that kills people. Uh, that kills people's muscles because it, it's not active enough. So recently as well, I also bought one of these. This is a this is a grip strength trainer. Uh, I had a choice of paying for a dollar or two dollars. The dollar one was like was like up to 60 kilograms and then the this one is like two dollars actually two and a half dollars this one goes up to 100 kilograms and because this one actually gives you more more range of exercises on on this uh, little thing i decided to go with this one instead so so you can do grip train oh and also it also has a little counter digital counter at the end so yeah it also has a little digital counter at the end, so I can do I can do exercises like this. So like if you're like for example, if you're already gripped onto the onto a handlebar, something like that, so I can do exercises like this. Or you can uh, reach for the bigger one. So like if you want to be able to grip like from an open palm. So this one actually helps with that. So you, you put your fingers on the end. Uh, wait, how, how many how, how many kilograms is this? Wait, hold on. One, two, three. Okay. Three by five is fifteen. Fifteen by plus ten, twenty-five. Okay. I know that for every revolution that I that I uh for every rep for every crank that I do here is like five kilograms. So I've already set this to 25 kilograms. It's not that much, to be honest. But it's I think it's enough that I can get some endurance. I'm actually training for endurance here because one thing I discovered is that I have a bar over there on my on my uh on my on my door. When I decided to do chest pull-ups, it seems like the reason why I can't do more than 10 pull-ups is because I actually lose I lose strength on my on my wrists or I lose strength on my on my hands oh by the way this is, this is these are finger gloves that's why it blends in with the uh, okay don't, don't 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 be confused that I have missing fingers all right uh, the blur is just making it worse yeah so so 25 kilograms is enough to actually get me like lots of lots of reps but with some resistance so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Obviously, the first twenty or thirty, it's not, it's not that difficult. But when I reach like forty or fifty, it's because my arms now become tired. That's when the intensity goes up. Then, if I'm, if I want to get my my whole hand, uh, I can I can squeeze on the out, outer end. And in case I want to train only se several one of my fingers, I can do do this as well and let's say for example I want to train my my pinky and my ring finger that's also an option I don't know how how practical this will be but you'll never know okay uh, hello Bert thank you thanks for joining in again okay so I guess enough chit chat I'm gonna have to do my uh, I'm gonna have to do my wait Where's my weight? Where did my weight go? Was I holding my... I was holding my weight. What the heck? Okay, never mind. Okay, I found it. Okay. So for context, I'm the kind of guy who is able to perform jumping jacks with a weight. Because I think that regular jumping jacks is too easy for me already. Like, I can do like 200 no problem. And I'm still not gonna sweat, so... I decided to do this and it's actually making increasing my intensity much much easier so for for those who can't see this is 10 pounds for uh americans and then for everyone else this is uh four and a half kilograms whichever uh whichever floats your boat i guess all right so 
30 jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Okay. Okay. Wow, my. Okay, awesome. So yeah, that's another thing about that's another thing about this about uh, performing jumping jacks with weights is that it actually engages your uh, it engages your core a little bit. So that's that's definitely gonna do some fat burning. Not a lot, but like yeah, that's something that you wouldn't expect in the cardio. So to be to be fair, that if you're doing cardio, you you're usually expected to be squeezing your uh, abs quite a lot. Okay. All right. So let's get back to the game. So for this part, for this section of yeah, for this section of the stream, we're gonna be doing the. The weird quest that involves yet another boss, and then maybe I'm gonna have to round up, uh, end the stream with, uh, with the new, with the new map. Eleven thirty-seven. Really? It's almost. That's almost close to to uh to lead. Okay. I'm a little salty that I haven't finished Scoop's Tall Tale yet, but you know what? All right. So. So here's a series of quests. What is this? So here's a series of quests exploring the past with Dr. Monkey with their encounter with Blunarius. Expedition on the swamp lands, we've been tracking something huge, but we had no idea what it is. My team were getting slowed down by the balloons in some sort of slime. We had to remove the slime. Okay. I've already, I've already finished this quest actually, or rather the first two parts of this quest, but I would like to do it again to make it complete. Part of bulk. Once I get that Druid of the Jungle, I'm definitely gonna be... I'm basically gonna be carrying the entire, uh, the entire run. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of slime. So 750 multiplied by seven, that's 700 times seven, 4,900. 4,900... What's 50? That's 1,050. Okay, there you go. Wait, what? No, 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 no. It's at least 7,500, give or take. Okay. Oh, hello, George. Thanks, thanks for joining in. You're just in time for you're just in time for the beginning of this uh, this uh, Blue Nereus quest.
Now because I'm now because I'm using I'm using jungle droid here, it's Yeah, because I'm using the jungle droid here is basically all I have to do is just a uh, camp. Not really camp, but actually just wait until I get enough money for to remove the slime. Okay, 750. Seven fifty. I don't have to worry about that camo, but you know what? I'm just gonna have to. Okay, target. Let's see if I can. Actually, you know what? Remove slime. Tell, sell, remove slime. Round 26. All right. All right, so that's part one. Slime's running out. We were deep in the swamp lands by that point and things were a little spooky. We found an abandoned hut with a farm. There's the farm. And slime surrounded the balloon path. Something told me we were getting close. It's a figure of speech. Okay. Now something interesting about this this part of the quest, I noticed that the slime the slime meter was not full. That already tells you that there's something not right there. Can I put one here? It would be nice if I can put one here, but no, apparently not. This one costs nothing, so I can't really sell this. So I might as well use it. Okay, that's that's uh, that's pretty bad. At first we thought it was the same as last time until a huge blob of slime fell down from the sky and got, got in the way. We still had to get rid of the slime to continue, but now there was a threat of slime overwhelming the team. Okay, so now we know that there's slime just randomly building up. Big yikes. I think it's every two rounds that they are that more slime will spawn. Not really sure where else should I he be putting should I be putting a farm if I need one. Okay. Jungle Druid. So, greater production. Oh, it's already 11.15. It's already 11.15 in my time. Alright. So basically, what I'm going to be doing here... I'm gonna have to upgrade this to a 203 here. Okay, that Okay, that was a that was a jump scare and a half.
Making pizza. Okay, interesting. You don't actually notice something weird. I think the marketplace actually got got cheaper. The last time I remember the marketplace was around 2900 2, bucks. Not 2700 bucks. Weird. Huh? Oh, we should not let the slime reach the maximum. Okay, okay, okay. Big yikes. That is the first time that I actually encountered that. No joke. Because last time I was diligently... I was diligently removing slime, but now I'm just trying to trying to work smart. But okay. Big yikes. Okay, it's this part. So every two rounds, I have to... Every two rounds, I have to watch out for the slime. Or have to, I have to get rid of some of the slime. Okay. When it reaches 10, maybe I'm gonna have to start worrying. So, Droid of the Jungle, now I can, I can focus on... So yeah, at this point I can focus on... Increasing the farm. So every odd numbered round, that's the time when a, when a slime is gonna spawn. Or is it? Or is it every even numbered round? Okay, so every even numbered round, it, the slime is gonna spawn. that okay So basically, I now have to focus on... Dang it. Of all the places for the slime to fall down. Okay, these ru the rounds when when the slime actually spawns is very inconsistent, or maybe they're getting more frequent. I'm not sure. Really.
Okay, so I think I can reach 2700 here. Okay, so that's... Now I have to worry less. Dang it. Hey, Mauler. Okay, that was really close. What the heck? Okay, I need to beat this. I need to beat this before round 50. You son of a- Okay, okay, okay. Yes! And finally, slime everywhere. The huge and formidable Plunarius was already there. And we already know where the slime had been coming from. We had to deal with the slime, but our only goal was to defeat the, the Swamp Dwelling Inflator. Okay. So, in interestingly, uh, yeah, Blunarius is right here. And strangely enough, this is actually the weakest version of Blunarius that I've seen so far. So the name of this, for those who are not familiar, by the way, the name of this map is called Blunarius Prime. Effectively, this is the home of Blunarius, actually. So the mechanics of this map is very interesting. There's a reason why it's called Blunarius Prime. And the reason behind that is because for every for every prime numbered uh, round, there's going to be a portal that's going to jump to here. So there's actually two paths here. There's the left path. Yeah, there's the left path and the right path. The right path is completely inaccessible. With the exception of the prime rounds. This is the prime path. Now, interesting enough, Blunarius actually has a special path. He goes from here, here, and then he crosses over the rocks and goes through here. So this is like one of the only times where you encounter a boss, a boss specific path. Like this is like literally, literally the only... Uh, this is currently the only map that I know of that specifically has uh, that specifically has a boss path, like at all, from my knowledge, at least. So here you go. Here you go. That that's where he goes. So the great thing about this is that- Oh, crap, crap, crap. Okay. Monkey Bank.
Oh, okay, there you go. Wow, run 27, though. I know run 29 is a prime number, so it goes that way. Okay, yeah, that was close. So as you can see, that there are some of them actually going on the boss path because that's uh, that's Blunarius's path, of course. Thirty-four is not a prime number path. Okay, so when am I going to start attacking him? Okay, so withdraw, get the destroyer and the aircraft carrier. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh no! Okay then. Considering I know... If I try this more than four times, I'm obviously going to... Uh, I'm obviously going to screw up. Okay, so now I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to follow a similar playbook to last time. Oh boy. Not good, not good, not good. Like, this is by far the slowest Blunarius that I've ever seen in my life. I know Blunarius doesn't go this slow. But then again, for the, si for the purpose of this quest, considering that he this quest actually starts at round 11, I think. Yeah, it makes sense that he's actually going this slow. Okay, collect money. Okay, that was close. Come on, marketplace. Okay. 
Hopefully I can beat Planarius before round 50. Hopefully. Dang, I've been slimed. The really big surprising thing here was that was the fact that he actually spawns. Yeah, the really big surprising thing here is that. Okay. Destroyer. And he's spawning blue. Okay, there you go. There you go. Aircraft carrier, let's go. I can handle your Moabs now. Oh boy. Wow, that was a that was some bad timing. After this, I'm gonna have to quit. I'm gonna have to quit this uh this quest, considering I've already lost enough. Because if I try this one more time, I'm obviously gonna, not gonna get the full benefit of this uh of this quest. But you know what? I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move him here. So now no, it actually goes there. Okay. I'm ready for you. Ah. Oh. Okay. No, oh, I already know. So I already know what I'm what I'm gonna be expecting now. So quick note, round twenty-four. Hey, round twenty-four. Yeah. Round twenty-four, camel balloon. Oh, this is gonna be a very long grind, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh farm. Hashtag very slow grind. I'm gonna go for a different... Yeah, I'm gonna be going for a different strategy this time.
3650. So I need to wait until 1100. So sell this. Monkey Bank. I'm gonna put one over here. Clean up slime and get my money back from this guy. Okay, that was close. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to set Yeah, I'm gonna have to set up better defenses here. Something's biting me right now. Okay. It's a good thing that the slime does not block line of sight. Or unless I'm missing something. Okay. Some of them do block line of sight. You got you have to inspect them pretty pretty carefully. Excuse me. Okay, so collect this. I'm going to have to invest in some glue here so as to not make the same mistake I guess sharp shooter so basically I'm trying my best to actually the heck Wait, hold on. My YouTube app for some reason suddenly closed. Okay. Wait, where was... Hello, blue liquefier. All right. So here's the destroyer. Okay, there you go. Aircraft carrier, let's go. Can we team up for one of the bids? Well, I guess, yeah, sure. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't ruin my schedule, and hopefully, it doesn't. Oh, oh, crap, 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 crap. 
Okay, there you go. Okay, that's actually pretty... That's actually pretty... That's actually a lot. You defeated Blunarius in its swamp. So, quick review. What I did here was that I put... I put down Druid. I put down two uh, crossbows. One of them is a sharpshooter. Then I upgraded this one to Blue Gunner or Blue, blue Liquifier. Then finally, Monkey Buck. Uh, Monkey Buck with Aircraft Carrier. It seems like Aircraft Carrier seems to be the, the best option here since... If Blunarius crosses over the other side, it's going to be a very big problem because you can't really chase it... Cha uh, you can't really chase it there anymore. Or it's going to be really difficult. So yeah, Aircraft Carrier seems to be the best option for this uh, for this map or then again you could just you could just camp over here that's also an option all right home a thousand monkey money which I only earned 250 because I I literally spent 750 bucks trying to retry this this quest doy oh well a uh, quick time check Five minutes. Okay. I want to try... Uh, before we end the stream, I would like to try that new map. Castle Revenge. Ready to fly. Now, unfortunate. Something I actually noticed here is that... I actually completely forgot that I have not checked, uh, I have not, um, wait a minute, what the heck? It's the UMG. It's that big balloon. I think that's a BAD. Moab. Another Moab. It's a really big balloon. I think that's that's also another BAD. Two ZUMGs are over here. Or no, that's one ZUMG. Another ZUMG. Why do these ZUMGs look small? Or maybe this this big ass this big ass vehicle is just really big. It's like soaring over the clouds or something. Because very clearly, this is a... Yeah, very clearly, this is a Moab Graveyard. Which is, by the way, a reference to Bloons Monkey City. Don't end the stream yet. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to end the stream immediately. I'm going to end the stream after the stretch break. Here we go. Oui. Wow, that depth though. And that's a really, really weird... That's a really weird pattern. Oui. Oui. Okay, this is bad, this is bad. Okay, there you go. That's why. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That is such a weird... That is such a weird pattern. So the pattern for this is one two on the uh, on the top and then one two at the bottom but sometimes but sometimes it alternates this is not a weird map
Oh wait, odd numbered round, it goes one, two, one, two. Eyes on that exit. But on an even numbered round, it alternates one, two, one. Eyes on that exit. So eight, so on even numbered rounds, wait a minute. No. This is so weird. And the top part isn't even even even. Battle Sue Strat, Quincy Tack Blue wins. Quincy Tack Blue, yeah. Eyes on that exit. Just so you know, this quick disclaimer, I'm just learning the map at the moment. Hey. This map isn't even symmetrical for some reason. Yeah, this map isn't even symmetrical because it can't, it can't even reach the, the upper part is easier to reach with the with the platform. But the lower part is actually a little dip a little more difficult than expected. That is so weird. Okay, I'm getting a little drowsy here. Best option here to is actually to put tax shooter here. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely it. How to type bold hello? I'm actually not sure. I mean, yeah, to be fair, uh, the tax shooter is an early game tower because it's cheap. And more often than not, the cheap ones are always early game towers. But considering how much damage they can do in such a short, uh, in such a short, uh, in such a short range, obviously it's not to be underestimated. So yeah, it seems like the it seems like the towers definitely have a bias towards the towards the upper part in this map. Eyes on that exit. More tax, even more tax. Yeah, because of this ridge over here, the bottom part is actually more difficult to reach with this platform. Which is Eyes on that exit. Which is definitely which is gonna trigger a lot of people who are OCD or something. I'm actually not sure if uh if markup or like if uh, formatted text is actually supported on YouTube chat. I'm not sure about that. I have yet, I have yet to try that. I know on on comments that that works. On YouTube chat, I'm not sure. So this is basically a flying fortress that is. That is running through a, that is bulldozing through a Moab graveyard. Presume, this is presume, hot take. This is presumably Lich's graveyard. 
But we don't know. Because remember, Lich is... Lich is associated with graveyards. And Halloween. And zombies. And all of that. How am I going to beat the Moab here? I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna have to brute... I feel, I feel like I'm gonna have to brute force him. What would be the best Paragon? That's gonna be a little difficult. I have a strange feeling that the best Paragon is possibly going to be the Spike Paragon. Considering how expensive the uh, the top path, uh, considering how expensive the top path was, for context, the the Goliath Doom Ship is like a million bucks in medium difficulty, and the most expensive upgrade of the Goliath Doom Ship is around seventy six thousand bucks. Sorry, the most expensive upgrade of the Ace Paragon is like. 70,000 bucks, but if you're also to account the Spectre Dark Ship, it's like in total at least a thousand bucks, a hundred thousand bucks already. So I can only imagine that if it that scales up that way, yeah, you can only imagine that if it scales up that way, the most expensive, the most expensive upgrade of the, of the, uh, of the spike. The most expensive upgrade of the Spike Factory is currently at a hundred thousand bucks, or close to a hundred thousand bucks, which is the uh, the Super Mines upgrade. Oh boy! Eyes on that exit. Okay, not bad. I'm gonna have to do some practice on this map. This is this is a very weird map. Okay. Here's my take on the Spike Paragon. This is only a concept, and I'm not sure if, uh, if Ninja Kiwi would consider this. This is my prediction of how the Spike Paragon would work. If you're gonna take into consideration the way how the wizard monkey performs, the wizard monkey is definitely a combination of all three paths, right? But you notice the, its access to the other. You'll notice that the wizard paragon is kind of like most of the time the wizard paragon kind of works like an upgraded arc mage, and the way how it works is that he occasionally uses the powers of the middle path and the bottom path. Right? The He has one ability, the Arcane Explosion, which immediately caught which immediately summons his Necromancer ability, like summoning ZOMG like summoning uh reanimated ZOMGs. So how do you put this? Yeah, the So the bot so he sometimes uses the power of the bottom path and then there's the arcane metamorphosis where he basically uh invests all of his all of his uh all of his mana into the phoenix and makes the phoenix stronger or by default he uses the toggle to make his main attack more stronger so he basically channels all three uh the wizard the wizard paragon basically channels all three of the paths it's just that by default his main path is like the uh the top path he's ba again he's basically kind of like an upgraded art mage how, where am i going with this this is this is how i think that the spike paragon would work you will notice that the spike paragon 
Uh, you'll notice that the Spike Paragon actually has... Of course, every single monkey actually has three paths. But you'll notice that the Spike... Uh, that the Spike Factory has three very distinct paths. Or rather, three uh, very different ways that the Spike gets deployed. Or there's always a fo there's like an attack focus on Spike. The bottom path is focused on defense. The middle path is focused on offense. And the reason why I say that it's focused on, uh, focus on offense is possibly because... Uh, remember, the third upgrade is called the Moab Shredder Spikes. It is designed to actually deal lots of damage to Moab. And then the middle path is kind of like somewhere in between. My guess is that they can go that, that route. They can dip... So the Spike Paragon can by default deploy uh, Spike Mines. So, sorry, just regular Spike Balls. If you activate a toggle, it will just turn into Spike Mines. Now, and then there's a toggle that en enables you to become... Uh, there's a toggle that enables the Spike Paragon to, be, to go attack mode. Where it drops the Shredder Spikes... Uh, it drops the Shredder Spikes in front of the Moabs. And every Shredder Spike can kill like at least at, at degree 1. Every Shredder Spike can kill at least one, uh, 1 BFP. Defense mode is, is going to be on the opposite end. Where it is going to activate the smart, uh, the, smart, uh, the smart spikes where it's going to be deployed at the very end. So it's kind of like an emergency. So like like uh like the way how it blocks. Yes, correct. Moab Shredder is the middle path, but from the Moab Shredder and then it it uh it upgrades to the Spike Storm and the Carpet of Spikes. Its focus on its focus is uh damage per spike, or other damage per hit, or DPS rather damage per spike. There you go, damage DPS. The bottom path, which is the defense mode. Or rather, the perma spike is like the complete opposite. It focuses on it focuses on pierce, but low damage. But so it's basically uh, emergency, emergency, uh, emergency defense. So every spike pile, every perma spike pile, has the ability to destroy at least ten moabs or something. But a single, but a single one of them is gonna be, have a problem with like two or three. The, uh, two or three, two or three Moabs, or sorry, two or three PFBs. Now, finally, if it, now, of course, obviously, there's going to be, there's obviously going to be a mention of this, the carpet of spikes, right? Its ability is obviously again the spike storm, but it spike storms the current mode. So there's the neutral mode, there's the attack mode. Or the defense mode, depending on depending on which you want. Uh, carpet, uh, the spike carp, uh, the uh, the spike storm is going to be shooting out the ammo that it's currently using. But if you're on attack mode, it's going to be carpet of spikes. Uh, the carpet of spikes attack every few seconds. That's that's the way how I think. That's the way how I think the spike the spike factory paragon is going to work. Now I'm actually not sure how the the mortar paragon is gonna work. That's a, that's actually gonna be very difficult to think of. My guess is that that's gonna be a, the most difficult one to pro. That's the, gonna be the most difficult one to uh to think of the mechanics for. Because after the wizard paragon, definitely it's gonna be uh it's gonna be you know they're, they're gonna definitely up up the ant uh kick up the ante and try to design a a mortar paragon. I'm not really sure if there's gonna be a sun sun god paragon anymore, considering that the the vengeful true sun god is technically a paragon, in a way. But I'm not sure. I mean, they could be hiring some of the they could be hiring some of the fans to actually design some stuff for them. Like for example, remember, uh, Jericho. So they designed they designed a map for Jericho. Yeah, there's that. But paragon mechanics is gonna be a little bit. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit uh, more difficult after the, the wizard paragon. So I'm gonna. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna.
uh, I'm out of water. At least to me, that's how, uh, that's how I think, that's how I think uh, the Spike Paragon would work. Because obviously you cannot just simply, for all, for balancing purposes, you cannot just simply do, you it cannot just simply drop a Spike. That is guaranteed to kill a round 100 bat. That's gonna be so OP. me the beast handler would okay I would say that the beast handler would probably be I can't exactly say that it's I can't exactly say that it's gonna merge into one gigantic beast remember a beast handler can handle up two beasts right so the beast handler paragon Theoretically, it's gonna handle three beasts. But my god, that's gonna be a micro. That thing is gonna be for micro masters only. Like, those people. Like, if you think Corvus is difficult to. If you think Corvus is actually very difficult to. Uh, is very difficult to use. A beast handler paragon is gonna be even more difficult to use because you have. You're controlling three different beasts at once. Oh my god. Now, yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, the beast handler can... One beast handler can handle two beasts. Remember that. Excuse me. One beast handler can handle up to two beasts. So the beast handler paragon... I have a feeling it's going to be called Beastmaster, but then again, they're going to get in trouble with it Ubisoft for that. Uh, the reason behind that is because in Far Cry Primal... Yeah, in Far Cry Primal, you get to tame beasts, and at the end of the game, you basically become uh, the Beastmaster. Now, Banana Farm. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be another difficult paragon to actually come up with. Here's a dumb idea for the paragon. Hey, Ninja Kiwi, you guys gave us you guys gave us a option to actually collect you guys gave us the option to collect banana uh to collect banana income from other banana farms using the using the monkey wall street upgrade i have an idea for you guys why don't you give that why don't you give the ability of being able to collect bananas with central market although with the exception that it can only collect at the narrower with a narrower uh with a narrower radius. That would be nice. Okay. Hack zone will be a little straightforward. That would be called Fiery Doom. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, Fiery Doom would actually be... Oh. Hack Zone Paragon actually sounds interesting. Wow, that's actually so late. Okay. Ah, uh, Travis Muldowney, thank you for the subscribe. I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised. Uh, Stream Elements was able to actually call out the subscribe, but my God, finally. Okay. Glue would be Gorilla Glue, I think, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling that Glue Paragon would be a little OP, because at this point, the, the Glue Paragon should be able to at least glue a BAD, realistically speaking, or if not, at bare minimum, it should... Okay, yeah, at bare, min at bare minimum... The glue paragon should at least debuff. Uh, the glue paragon should at least debuff BADs, for sure. I might actually, I'm. 
So considering the the term solution is actually thrown around, unfortunately you cannot really call it the final solution because that's that's gonna be a prob that's gonna be a localization problem for Germans. Uh, if you know your if you know your European history correctly, and your uh with a certain European racist group from the 1940s, from the 1940s. For legal, for localization reasons, you cannot call it, for localization reasons, you cannot call it the final solution. I think. Just to keep it, th just to keep it safe. You can't really call it that. Because I'm pretty sure that some Germans are going to get triggered. Uh, some German localizers are going to get really triggered with the way that, uh, with that name. Pretty sure. Anyway, so gamer TV, I know you can uh, contact me via Twitch because you uh, you gave me a follow there. Uh, I'm gonna give you my contact details in case you would like to uh, feature me in any of your videos. That would be actually nice. Hopefully, this doesn't uh, ruin my schedule because let's just say that uh, let's just say that my introvert schedule is a little restrictive. So yeah, super solution store. Okay, that's 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 actually not bad. Maybe Storm of Solution would be nice. Okay, anyway. Um So that's a very long tangent at the end of the stream. I've been I've already been streaming for two and a half hours. And it's currently April 12 already. When is April 20? When is April 20? It's a Saturday. Okay. Anyway. So, for those who are currently watching, actually, wait, hold on. Before I end the stream, I'm gonna have to do the, I'm gonna have to do the stretch break, the stretch redeem. Oh, only two subscribers. Okay. Uh, that's only one subscriber, but that's completely fine. All right. Twenty jumping jacks. Okay. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, twenty. Okay. All right. No, it's already very, very late into the night for me. It's already morning, technically morning in my time zone. So, uh, for those who are currently watching, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be sleeping right after this. So, uh, sorry, but no thanks. And let's just say that I have a relatively long day that has been ruined by some. Random circumstances. Yeah, my, my day is easily ruined, to be honest. So, anyway. So, um, to, so for, our, for all of my new viewers here, and for all of my existing viewers, all I can say is, uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, all I can say is, uh, if you really like my content, please do give a sub. I'm not... Uh, unfortunately, you guys are not going to be able to get a stretch redeem anymore. But do, uh, but please do subscribe if you really like my content, and I'm going to be uploading some videos soon, hopefully before my next uh, asphalt stream, hopefully. And uh, do subscribe, do uh, follow my socials. So uh, I'm on, what is this? I'm on Twitter. Unfortunately, I'm on Facebook, and I'm also on Twitch. Uh, I'm actually very close to 200 uh, followers on Twitch, although I'm not gonna be streaming there anytime soon. But do, but I would actually like that. I would actually like that uh, I can have more subscribers when I come back, whenever that's gonna happen. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So big yikes. Um, and do uh, what is this? Uh, do watch out for some of my community posts if I uh, if I ever get to that, hopefully. So anyway. Thank you for watching, and see you guys next week. Uh, asphalt. Wait. 
Asphalt stream this Sunday. Wait, Asphalt stream this Sunday. Uh, BTD Battles 2 stream next week. I'm not sure when it's going to be. It's either Wednesday or Thursday, depending on the circumstances. Either of those, either of those days is is good. So either way, thank you for watching. See you guys next week, or see you guys next time.